right, everybody, welcome back to another OpenShift Commons briefing. Today, as we are wont to do on Mondays, we are bringing one of the upstream projects um, that is one of the more important workloads on um, right these days. Not that your workload is not important, but um, one of the more interesting ones, um, Open Data Hub, uh, the AI platform and team to um, come and tell you a little bit about this project at um, Red Hat. And we have a number of members here, Lana, um, Vaclav, Chad, Landon, and Beverly. Um, Landon LaSmith is going to walk us through first a little overview of what Open Data Hub is, and then we're going to open it up to Q&A and have an AMA session on this, as um, we like to do, and have a little bit of a demo of it. So queue up your questions wherever you're watching this, whether it's Facebook, Twitch, or YouTube, or if you're in the blue jeans. And um, we'll aggregate those questions and answer them, hopefully, um, after the demo and lecture part and have a conversation about what Open Data Hub is and how to use it. So take it away, Landon. Hi. Uh, so as uh, Diane stated, uh, my name is Landon Smith. I'm one of the engineers on the Open Data Hub team, along with uh, Joanna uh, Vacek and Chad. Um, so I'm just going to give a, a quick overview of Open Data Hub and uh, hopefully we can answer all of your questions. Right. So in this slide, we're gonna cover what is Open Data Hub, uh, give a brief introdu uh, introduction to Kubeflow, which is our kind of upstream project that um, we're in sync with, um, kind of tell you where Open Data Hub is used, and just do a, a, give you a quick demo on how you can deploy uh, Open Data Hub. So what is Open Data Hub? Um, the original goal of Open Data Hub is to build a, a platform for data science. Um, so we want to make it as easy as possible for a data scientist to, to stay within their workflow. Um, so we know that they have many tools that they use for model training, model development, model serving. Um, we wanted to make that as easy as possible uh, to do it on OpenShift. Uh, OpenShift allows us to kind of scale out to different needs, um, and configure the workflow exactly how they want to do it. Um, one of the issues we tried to tackle um, is to make it so that the everybody on the team can contribute to the data science workflow. Uh, we want the, a team of data scientists to be able to work on shared data using some type of storage, uh, use an environment, a development environment that they're comfortable with, uh, in this case, Jupyter Notebooks, um, but also allow a kind of data engineers and DevOps to, to work within that workflow uh, to create the best solution possible. So uh, this began what uh, we are now calling the Open Data Hub. Uh, Open Data Hub is not a Red Hat, official Red Hat product. Uh, it is a community project. Uh, we set out to create a reference architecture to uh, provide best practices on how you can deploy these different tools within this data science workflow. Um, we have a lot of information on these best practices, how to deploy Open Data Hub, how to use different components of Open Data Hub on our website at opendatahub.io. And the core part of Open Data Hub is the, <laughs> the meta operator or the meta project, the Open Data Hub operator. Um, so with this operator, we can deploy different tools that will be used in the workflow for a data engineer, the data scientist, and make it easy for DevOps to deploy um, uh, this project. So if you want to deploy the Open Data Hub, you can find that on any OpenShift cluster under the Operator Hub uh, on that cluster and look for Open Data Hub. It is a community operator that's available to install for free, uh, no Red Hat subscription required. So the Open Data Hub ecosystem uh, combines a, a lot of different parts where we gather input uh, for um, best use cases, best practices uh, for Open Data Hub. So we work with a lot of uh, customers, uh, internal and external, to kind of uh, lay out uh, how we want the Open Data Hub uh, to proceed. So uh, we take public requests. Um, you can contribute to the Open Data Hub. Uh, we work with Red Hat partners to see, you know, if their tool uh, helps further the Open Data Hub. 
Um, and we work with a lot of upstream components um, that have downstream um, projects within Red Hat. So our goal is to use completely open products within the Open Data Hub um, and also provide a path where you could kind of substitute in uh, these downstream products if necessary. But everything is freely available. So this is kind of a few of the uh, components that are in Open Data Hub uh, in this nice graphic. Uh, we focused on kind of uh, Jupyter Notebooks for the development environment. Um, object storage provided by kind of Ceph. Um, Apache Spark for data engineering, Selden for model serving. Uh, Argo Workflows are uh, kind of the, the core uh, pipeline technology that we've used in the past. Um, uh, Prometheus Grafana, TensorFlow, uh, and Kafka. So uh, with the recent release um, of Open Data Hub 0 0.6, we're currently on version 0 0.7, uh, we are an official downstream of Kubeflow. So the Kubeflow project is uh, is a project to um, bring together all these data science tools um, into a, um, a ecosystem that works on Kubernetes. And we do the work to make sure that this uh, workflow also works on OpenShift, um, but we also bring in a lot of products uh, that aren't covered by Kubeflow. And all of this is available on Operator Hub. All right. So uh, this is a graphic kind of our original release. Uh, so a little bit of backstory about Open Data Hub. Uh, Probably a year ago, we had our official release of uh, 05. Uh, this contained a few of the components, um, which were Jupyter Hub, uh, data catalog for um, that contained Q Hive um, and uh, Thrift, uh, GPU support, Argo, and um, all in the Ansible operator. With the switch to kind of downstream Kubeflow, uh, we refactored or, or updated the operator so it's purely based on Go. Uh, it works with the KF Def manifest and it fully supports Kubeflow products. So using this Open Data Hub operator, you can deploy Kubeflow on OpenShift uh, in addition to Open Data Hub components. So the current release is 0.7. Um, you can see a, a few of the components we have released. Uh, so we have full support for Kubeflow version 1.0. You can deploy that with our operator on OpenShift. Uh, KF serving support. Um, with our operator, I, I think this might be mixed in. We can use this with Open Data. Um, full CI testing on all of our updates and releases. So as soon as we submit any updates to Open Data Hub, we run a full uh, um, battery of CI tests to make sure that, that new component uh, doesn't break any existing functionality, but also pro um, provides working new functionality. Uh, you can mix and match ODH and Kubeflow components. Uh, so right now we're verifying a small subset, subset but with the 0 0.8 release, um, we plan to verify and test kind of all of the default Kubeflow 1.0 components um, mixed in with ODH components um, and uh, some OpenShift container storage. So, um, the current operator for Open Data Hub is a kind of a phase one basic install. Um, this means that it will deploy Open Data Hub um, and uh, do some minor updates, but uh, for the most part, we're doing a full install. Uh, we have plans as time goes on, you know, throughout the year to kind of bring this into a phase five operator, uh, but these are long-term plans. Uh, but as of right now, you can deploy your Open Data Hub ecosystem, um, um, architecture on your OpenShift cluster without any issues. So Kubeflow. Uh, Kubeflow, uh, for those that may not be aware of it, uh, is an open source project dedicated to making deployments of ML workflows on Kubernetes, uh, simple, portable, and scalable. Um, a lot of the work we did to bring that, or bring Open Data Hub in line with Kubeflow is to make sure that there are no issues when deploying from Kubernetes to OpenShift. Uh, we had to introduce a lot of updates and fixes to make Kubeflow more secure. Um, we want to make sure that, you know, not every container is running with root privileges, that you don't have to uh, elevate any container privileges uh, beyond the standard um, uh, runtime permissions. Um, 
And then we kind of verify and make sure that model training and serving works uh, on OpenShift. So these are a few of the goals. Uh, this is for Open Data Hub um, and working with uh, Kuplo. Uh, we want to incorporate best practices. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, a simplified install. Uh, we want to use the kind of UBI or universal base image um, as the base for all of the Open Data Hub components. Uh, this provides anybody deploying Open Data Hub with a level of security that comes with using that UBI base image. Um, so you get a lot of the, the Red Hat effort <clears throat> for providing a secure base image uh, in Open Data Hub. And um, we also want to make sure that we uh, secure that deployment of Open Data Hub and, and by extension, Kubeflow, uh, so that it's using kind of well-defined permissions. Um, we kind of eliminate any containers uh, that require root privileges um, and work within the kind of standard um, deployment, standard secure deployment that OpenShift provides. So this is a kind of a quick graph of some uh, Open Data Hub components that we are uh, bringing to the new release of uh, 0.7 or 0.8. Um, we have, um, we're working on kind of allowing you to deploy storage along with uh, Open Data Hub uh, based on uh, Ceph object storage. Um, we have support for, I guess we have components that are using Postgres, um, but as of right now, you can deploy Kafka um, and we have, uh, you can deploy Spark clusters. Uh, we're working on updates to provide kind of data exploration. Though we do have Superset, which allows you to do um, uh, uh, data visualization. Uh, so you can work directly with kind of your external databases or data sources to visualize that data. Um, we're working on adding data cataloging with Hue so that you can kind of navigate your object storage, <clears throat> but also um, uh, run Spark SQL queries on that data. Uh, so we're hoping to get that into the next release. Um, and we currently, I think we do support with the, the ability to mix Open Data Hub and Kubeflow components for TF serving. Uh, I think PyTorch is in the, the final verification steps. Uh, we do deploy uh, support Selden model serving um, and Argo and Kubeflow pipelines, along with monitoring by Prometheus and Grafana. And like I said in the bottom right, our, our data scientist kind of workflow includes JupyterHub. So we fully support uh, OpenShift uh, authentication for those notebooks. So JupyterHub being a multi-user notebook server, uh, a team of data scientists can work within their own notebooks uh, separate from each other, but potentially share data either through uh, object storage or even sharing notebooks via their, uh, allowing others to access their notebook pods. Um, and all of that is fully integrated with kind of a Spark cluster that you can deploy. And we have our AI library with kind of example um, AI models that you can utilize for your workflow. So um, if you want to join the Open Data Hub or follow it, uh, as always, feel free to go to our website at opendatahub.io. Um, we are uh, fully functioning on github.com slash opendatahub-io. So if you want to track any issues or progress that we're making in the project, all of our um, Open Data Hub projects exist under that organization of Open Data Hub dash IO. Uh, again, we're a community project, so feel free to kind of take a look, file issues if something doesn't work correctly, or submit PRs. So if you see an issue or you want to add a new feature, um, definitely um, go there and uh, submit a PR. Um, if you want to track progress, uh, we have an announcements list you can subscribe to, and then a contributors list if you go the extra mile to submit uh, PRs and, and want to become a contributor. And then we have biweekly uh, Open Data Hub community meetings that you can track archives on the uh, our GitLab site. So I want to clear up confusion. So our old operator exists on GitLab, but to make sure that we can stay in sync with kind of Kubeflow updates uh, and become a fully functioning downstream of Kubeflow, 
uh, we migrated to GitHub, but a lot of our old projects are still on GitLab, uh, the Open Data Hub community being one of those. But uh, it's still current for the Open Data Hub community, so you can see old meetings, get uh, notes from any of the meetings where we have a lot of guests present, um, any use cases that are utilizing Open Data Hub, or kind of volunteering or uh, opening the discussion to add new features to Open Data Hub. Um, so this is kind of uh, some examples of where Open Data Hub is being used. Um, originally, Open Data Hub was uh, an internal project that um, uh, started with a basic Elk stack, if I remember correctly. And we worked with internal customers so that they could kind of um, work with their data uh, in an easy fashion. So we provided a storage and Elasticsearch to interact with that data. And from that, we got a lot of customer use cases um, that helped to form the Open Data Hub. So a lot of the work internally, um, we transitioned to the Open Data Hub uh, so that some of our experiences with uh, this type of workflow can be utilized by the community as a whole. Uh, a few of the uh, early adopters for Open Data Hub, uh, the Massachusetts Open Cloud, uh, it's a collaborative effort of uh, a few or universities to kind of run their data science and, and uh, high resource workloads on a open, um, high availability cloud. Uh, so Open Data Hub is kind of part of the, the backbone for some of this work um, where kind of professors, uh, research researchers, uh, and even some students can get access to, to run their um, OpenShift or, or data science workflows. So we'll do a, I'll give a quick demo. I just want to demonstrate how you can get access to the Open Data Hub and deploy it within your workspace. So let me kick over to my OpenShift console. So here I have a, a basic OpenShift cluster. Uh, potentially you could deploy this on uh, any OpenShift cluster. So right now I'm using a <clears throat> three worker node cluster. So this is pretty standard for any OpenShift install. Uh, we do have support for deploying on something as small as a, a CRC or code ready containers cluster. Uh, you could also use OKD, which I think just released, uh, just went GA or general availability for OpenShift 4 clusters. So right now the, the current iteration of OpenShift or Open Data Hub supports OpenShift 4.x. So the current version is 4.5, which I think was released last week or two weeks ago. Um, so any of the freely available OpenShift clusters can be used to deploy Open Data Hub. Um, but if you go down to kind of CRC or OKD on your laptop, you'll need to scale it accordingly. Um, so if you want to deploy Open Data Hub, you can log into any OpenShift cluster and go to Operator Hub. So this should be available in every single OpenShift 4 cluster. And you search for Open Data Hub. Actually, let me backtrack. Let me go ahead and create the namespace. So just create any namespace. I use Open Data Hub. And here you'll see Open Data Hub Operator. And again, it's available as a community operator, which means it's freely available for anybody to deploy on any OpenShift cluster. And you'll get kind of a rundown of the, the um, current components that we deploy as part of the Open Data Hub with additional info about where you can uh, uh, track the project, uh, the operator image, where we're pulling the operator image, and uh, additional information. So this kind of describes the available channels that you'll see in the next step. So when we click install, we're presented with um, these standard options for any operator. Um, the current iteration of Open Data Hub is a cluster-wide operator, which means that we can deploy any um, KFDEF uh, custom resource that the Open Data Hub watches for into any namespace in the cluster, and the operator will see that and deploy Open Data Hub. Uh, the update channel is beta, 
uh, beta is what you want to use right now. That is our where we're hosting our new operator. Legacy is the older namespace bound operator. Uh, that is the older Ansible operator. That still works, but um, we are providing kind of uh, minimal support for that. So a lot of the components that are deployed there will not be receiving updates um, since we're doing all our updates on the beta channel. And we'll leave the approval strategy as automatic. So this means that whenever we release newer versions of Open Data Hub, they'll be available um, and installed. The operator will update automatically. And hit subscribe. And now we're just waiting for the operator to be installed by OLM. OLM is Operator Lifecycle Manager. So we utilize a lot, or OLM a lot. Um, so in the older operator, uh, one of the issues that we encountered was that we had to kind of recreate the deployment strategy for every component we deployed. So if we deployed Prometheus, we had to create the deployment objects, the, the roles, service accounts, um, every single item that was required to deploy a component, we had to bury that or kind of embed that into the operator image. Now, uh, if there is a component that the Open Data Hub uses that is available in Operator Hub, so whatever component has put forth the effort to kind of be listed on Operator Hub, we can easily leverage that entry in Operator Hub for our Open Data Hub. So we're not recreating the deployment um, the strategy or plan for every component. We can literally say for uh, Selden version 1.2, uh, reach out to OLM and deploy that operator. So that's good because we, don't, we aren't required to kind of um, stay in sync with their update strategy. So as you know, Selden updates their operator and pushes that to the OpenShift operator hub, we automatically get those updates for that version and OLM will handle the kind of deployment strategy. So now that the operator is deployed, Open Data Hub, we just click on that and you'll kind of get a, another overview of the deployment. Um, so the Open Data Hub operator is looking for KFDEF custom resources. Um, so anytime you submit a KFDEF resource, which is the um, essentially the customized manifest format for Kubeflow, once you submit, create one of those on an OpenShift cluster, the Open Data Hub operator will see that, and based on the information that's in there, it will deploy it. So we'll go ahead and click Create Instance, and hopefully you can see this, but this is a sample KFDEF or an example KFDEF format that um, we provide. So what you can do is you can look through this, and you'll see every entry in this cust or applications. Uh, dictionary has the same basic format. So customized config uh, with a repo ref and a name. Customized config, repo ref, and a name. So this determines what is getting deployed as part of this KF dev. So here you'll see that we're deploying uh, AI library cluster and AI library operator. Um, one of the things that uh, we set out to do whenever we add a component to Open Data Hub is to kind of separate the cluster-wide permissions or cluster-wide action, uh, mainly things like deploying to a cluster-wide namespace, uh, I want to say checking for required CRDs, uh, exist in this kind of cluster um, component. And then anything specific to the deployment of the operator or application uh, exists out there, so in the this operator. Deployment, sorry. <laughs> um, so uh, a lot of these components will have two portions or, or two configs. So here you'll see Kafka, um, cluster and Kafka, Kafka. So anything that's not named cluster, uh, so Kafka, Kafka actually has the, um, the deployment files necessary for a Kafka deployment. Uh, cluster is generally the, the CRDs and any required cluster-wide um, options. So as you look through this KFDEF, uh, you'll see all the components that we're deploying, Kafka, Grafana, 
uh, the RAD Analytics Spark operator, uh, Prometheus, um, Jupyter Hub. Jupyter Hub will be the entry point to a lot of the, the use cases for uh, Open Data Hub, if you watch any demos or, or examples. Uh, Airflow, Argo, and so on and so forth. Um, so with the latest release of Open Data Hub, this is kind of uh, one of the new features we, we wanted to focus on. So you'll see in this repo section, we have KF Manifests um, and regular manifests. So KF Manifest is a fork, a downstream fork of the um, fixes and updates that are required to deploy Kubeflow on OpenShift. So if you go to the github.com Kubeflow slash manifest, that is the pure vanilla Kubeflow deployment that will work on uh, Kubernetes. And um, they do have support for additional um, cloud provider, so uh, Azure, I want to say IBM, Google Cloud. Um, but in this Open Data Hub IO manifest are all the files um, and updates, fixes that you need to deploy on OpenShift. And this plain manifest, which is in the ODH manifest repo, this is the Open Data Hub uh, proper. So these are components that we've specifically curated as part of the Open Data Hub reference ar architecture to deploy. So if you just deploy anything using manifest as the repo name, then this is the Open Data Hub implementation. If you see anything that references KF manifest as a repo name, then this is based on kind of the, the upstream deployment of Kubeflow that we have added a few fixes to make sure that it deploys successfully on OpenShift. So right now, I think everything just references manifest, but as uh, the next version is released and newer versions, you'll start to see more and more uh, mixing of Kubeflow and Open Data Hub components. So um, potentially you'll see like the TF job operator, the PyTorch operator, um, maybe even some pipeline work. Um, it just depends on kind of what we uh, have time to verify before that release. So in order to deploy Open Data Hub, you just hit create. You'll see the KF def file is created. You can view the YAML. And now we just wait for everything to deploy. So slowly you'll see kind of different components come online based on that KF def. Um, the library operator, Selden controller, superset, uh, so on and so forth. And once these pods come online and they deploy successfully, um, then you can start to use any of the com components that are deployed. So this may take a few minutes, but um, that is kind of open data hub in a, a nutshell. So I don't know while we wait, if we just want to go ahead and open the floor to any questions. Certainly, we always have questions. <laughs> One one of them, um, while you're doing this, maybe explain a little bit. Um, one of the que questions that's often asked is, is Open Data Hub available for generic kub kub Kubernetes, um, which kind of flows into the question about, is Open Data Hub available on operatorhub.io? So, yeah, so uh, there's a lot of confusion between Operator Hub that you see in OpenShift and operatorhub.io. So operatorhub.io, the website, are for operators that are uh, certified to work on vanilla Kubernetes. So not uh, OpenShift, but the uh, upstream Kubernetes uh, server. So um, we are certifying that we work on OpenShift, which means that we are only available in the OpenShift operator hub that is deployed with all OpenShift clusters. So just because you don't see us on operatorhub.io means that does not mean that Open Data Hub isn't available on Operator Hub. It just means that we're, we're certifying that we work on uh, OpenShift. So any OpenShift deployment, whether it's OKD, Code Ready Containers, OpenShift on AWS, OpenStack, if it if OpenStack or OpenShift is supported on any type of infrastructure, then you have access to Open Data Hub. Yeah, and and you did mention, and I'll mention this while we watch your your screen scroll here. Um, 
that OKD uh, is now available, and OKD is the open source distribution of OpenShift, um, and it's available now as of July 15th um, in general availability, and it's running on Fedora CoreOS, but um, you should be able to deploy the operator hub, uh, op the operator hub, open data hub um, easily on OKD. Um, and I don't know if anybody's tested that yet, but if you haven't, um, let me know. Um, I do, I'm one of the chairs of the OKD working group. We'd love to get your feedback on that and help you through it if there's any issues whatsoever. Um, I don't think anyone on the ODH team has done that yet. Uh, it's probably too, too soon. Um, that was just last week. So we we'll definitely have to get that tested. Yeah, and uh, just to kind of build on top of what Diane just said, if you deploy it on OKD um, or any infrastructure provider, uh, OpenShift um, cluster, and you're experiencing any issues, please, please submit the issue to kind of any of our projects. Uh, if if something isn't working with the operator, uh, add that to the open data or create an issue in open data hub dash operator. Um, if any of the components aren't working correctly, then feel free to file an issue on ODH-manifest. If you are deploying kind of pure Kubeflo on OpenShift, um, then feel free to file that on open the organization open data hub-io slash manifest. Um, and if you file it to the wrong one, that's fine. We will definitely make sure it goes to where it needs to be. Definitely straighten you out and point yep. you in the right direction. Um, and really, if you're listening to this and you are running um, this reference architecture or want to, please do reach out. Um, we're definitely looking, um, I'm seeing it pop up in lots of conversations um, across the ecosystem from healthcare to and COVID tracking stuff to all kinds of interesting things. So it's definitely then starting, starting to get a lot of um, overflow into other um, spaces and market spaces and use cases. So we're Definitely looking for more feedback and any bugs, anything you find, send to us. So how's your demo going? Uh, everything's deployed. Uh, we're missing one key thing for Jupyter Hub, but um, I'll investigate that. <laughs> and um, we'll go from there. Um, so we can open it to other components. So or questions. Let's see. Sets. So one of the things I'll say, uh, whenever you deploy uh, Open Data Hub, uh, we make sure that everything's ready in a state where you can use it automatically. So if any of the components um, need to be accessible, so they're not just kind of back-end components where a uh, component A is just utilizing a service from component B, if it's something that the user needs to interact with, we make sure that there's an OpenShift route created to that so that you can easily once Open Data Hub's deployed, just go to networking routes and access that component. So here you'll see super set. So um, now that this has been deployed, uh, it's ready to kind of interact with and, and you can start your workflow from there. What was the piece of Jupyter Hub that didn't deploy here? That was so Check. Let me see. This is why we love to do live demos while we're live <laughs> streaming because it makes it much more interesting and people believe us that it actually works and it's not smoke and mirrors and this truly isn't smoke and mirrors. So we do have. Check the operator.
I'm trying to see if there's any mention of Jupiter Hub. Okay. Maybe while you're doing this, okay. um, we can answer a few more questions and um, un I'll unmute some of the other folks that are um, from your team and you can debug it and just raise your hand when you figure it out or not um, and we can do that. So um, let's see who else we have. Juana is here and Valklav was here, Beverly's here. Hey Juana. Hey, how are you? Uh, and it's Joanna, right? It's not. Yeah. Wanda. It's Joanna. <laughs> and I'm going to just shoot myself because I ought to be able to remember that each time. No worries. I'm sorry. And Vaclav is here. Um, so that there are, while he's doing that, a couple of other questions. Um, and I think you, you answered the one about and explaining where it is um, in terms of vanilla Kubernetes versus OpenShift. And I think we do have a pretty strong um, full open source stack with the the complement of OKD now. So anybody who wants to do a full stack without licensing OCP could, could if they would. And I, I, I'll see if I can get the OKD working group to find someone to, to test it out for us. Um, but uh, one of the questions that came in and um, Beverly has you know, is, is probably gonna guide us through some of them. Maybe the first question, if you wanna go through that. Absolutely. So why not? Um... Are all components from Kubeflow available or included in Open Data Hub? Uh, actually, yeah, so not all of them are. For example, I could say KF serving today doesn't work uh, with Kubeflow 1.0 that we have. Um, and if you look at the example manifest um, that is actually linked through our operator main page description, you'll see that some components are commented out and these are the components that we are actually still working on to get them working on OpenShift. So it's a work in progress for us. So, okay. so Joanna, do you have, um, right now it's probably a heavily Red Hat led contribution base right now. Do you have people external to Red Hat contributing and helping out? Uh, we do have very few people mainly opening issues and, and guiding us through fixing the issues. I wouldn't say we have uh, major contribution, but um, we do have some contributors from IBM with regards to the operator uh, contributing heavily there. Um, I'm going to add something, I forgot what it was, but yeah, that's mainly what it is. Yeah, but uh, our community meeting is always um, busy with many different uh, developers from different uh, companies, and we do work really close with many of the component owners, such as Selden and Kubeflow. Yeah, so I think as as this community expands, the end users become really important because they're giving the feedback to how it's being used and the integration partners like Celadon and others um, become important too as well. So it'd be interesting to see how the, um, the ecosystem grows around this because you have incorporated a whole lot of partner and integration points there. So that's gonna be fun to watch as we go through. And Diane, now that you spoke about the end users, uh, we also have a question on whether we have active use cases um, for the date for Open Data Hub. Um, so we have, uh, from a use case perspective, uh, from an industry perspective, we do have uh, a couple of one use case that's already out there, which is the fraud detection use case that we have all the code and all the instructions um, on GitLab for it. And then we're working on a couple. We ha we also have AI on the edge that Landon's working on, and then uh, we're working on other industries. I think we have one in the banking industry, uh, and a couple down the line coming down. Is that what you mean by use cases, or did you mean how is Open Data Hub being used uh, currently? I mean, it could. Well, that answers the question, but. Um... We could also look at it in terms of do we have maybe like clients 
that are already mm -hmm. using Open Data Hub in their infrastructure? Yeah, so we do have a couple clients. Um, we have a couple um, ExxonMobil using it, and they, had, and they did many presentations with regards to using Open Data Hub. We also um, have internal implementation of Open Data Hub um, that is being used by internal data scientists and data engineers in Red Hat. And then we also have the MOC that uh, Landon describes, and I'm sure Vashak can add a couple more about this and where it is at today. I also think yeah, that, sure. yeah, yeah, Vashak, go ahead. Um, so with MOC, we are working on uh, support for Open Data Hub on Power9 uh, machines and Power9 clusters uh, of OpenShift. And we have Open uh, Data Hub deployed in MOC and is is being used uh, by students for their research work. Um, we had a couple uh, kind of early adopter projects. Um, I don't think that any of them is live right at the moment. Um, but part of that is that um, since we have moved to um, mostly only supporting, well, supporting is the wrong word, but using and verifying ODH deployment on OpenShift 4 and MOC is still running on OpenShift 3, uh, it's been kind of hard to keep it running there. Um, so we are working with them. Um, we have weekly syncs to to basically see where they are, and when they have OpenShift 4 ready uh, for us, we will um, come back to to um, having Open Data Hub fully running there. Uh, part of our roadmap, uh, which you can find on Open Data Hub.io as well, is um, for the next release to have a plan for how we could do C continuous deployment. Uh, Landon mentioned we have an internal deployment of Open Data Hub, uh, which is running internally at Red Hat. And then we have that partially public uh, deployment uh, on MOC where the researchers that are part of Messages Open Cloud can use it. Um, and our goal uh, for the next release will be to come up with a plan for reproducible continuous deployment solution or process rather, where we uh, our new releases of Open Data Hub would go to our internal Data Hub instance and to MOC deployed instance. And it would be hopefully also reproducible for our um, for our users, where they can use that process to to also like get their deployment uh, bound to our releases and, and and stuff like that. I saw on, on your your roadmap as well is that you were thinking about disconnected deployments. Yeah, definitely. Um, it, it is a big is a big ask, um, and not only for Open Data but also for the Kubeflow the upstream project that we. Uh, pull components from. Um, there is plenty of people that are running disconnected, be that um, with edge deployments or or generally um, on a remote locations where they maybe only have uh, mobile connections or something like that. And they need to be they need to be able to make sure that they can control the traffic that is coming in and out of the clusters. Um, so we want to make sure that uh, that is possible with open data up uh, when deploying that like everything goes kind of smoothly. They can pre-pull the images and they can deploy to a disconnected environment whenever they are ready. Um, so we'll be looking at that probably this, this fall. Um, we've been looking at that for some time in our previous versions, uh, which was based on Nancy Block Raider. Um, but it was kind of hard because there was just a lot of parameterization with Ansible, and it was just like all the repos, all the registries, all the images, and, and it was kind of a mess. So we hope that with this Kubeflow-based solution, it will be a bit easier, and also Kubeflow was working that in the past. I'm not 100% sure if they were able to finish it, um, but we will definitely look at the Kubeflow solution for that, but that there is any, and if not, maybe we can help or finish or, or bring it back to the community and, and see what they have in mind for that. Cool, thanks. I know because we had someone um, come to the OKD working group who wanted to do um, on ARM64 an ML use case using OKD in a disconnected fashion. So I think maybe Open Data Hub is a bit overkill for what they were trying to do, but um, I think it gives them a, a good roadmap and a good, maybe a, a collaboration point um, to, to work through. So I'll, I'll see if I can feed you that use case as well. I think I think it's a it's an interesting point whether Open Data Hub is overkill. Um, you don't have to use all the components, right? Yeah. If your only reason to run Open Data Hub is to deploy Selden and something else, then maybe it's it's still good to use Open Data Hub because we have verified the components that they run well on OpenShift and there are some integrations and there is more coming. Um, if it's just one component and it's already in Operator Hub and we just depend on it, 
maybe it doesn't make sense to run openly now, but if it's like free things that you would be running, um, it gives you kind of a single point where you just apply that one custom resource and it all comes up and it's all integrated and configured. In the background there, did you get that working, Landon? Yes. So, um, <laughs> just so it doesn't look like magic or anything, um, what we did, I was playing around with the KFDEF. Um, the operator was kind of um, throwing an issue with Grafana deployment. Um, so it was kind of a timing issue. So we're relying on OLM to deploy Grafana based on the Grafana devs configuration. Since we have it separated into kind of Grafana cluster and the Grafana application, we kind of needed like a little uh, wait time uh, in between the two of a few seconds. So one of the dependencies that the Grafana deployment required uh, wasn't present um, yet. So that would have been deployed by Grafana cluster. So it was a small race condition. So um, let me, I'll just go over of what we did. As always, when you have a problem, try the simplest solution. Uh, so I went to the KFDEF. And I moved the Grafana component to the bottom. <laughs> so this is pretty simple. Uh, so I just cut, or cut this text from higher up in the KFDF YAML and moved it to the bottom. Uh, what happens is once we save that, it'll trigger an update, um, which the operator will detect, and then it will reprocess that KFDF. So now there's, um, based on the previous attempt to deploy Grafana, all the dependencies were installed. Um, and now we can deploy Grafana successfully. So that's that's all I did. And what they did was kind of unblock the dam. So um, once that was resolved, all the below components or the components below Grafana deployed successfully. So you'll see we have a lot more deployments. And we have now Argo is uh, available. Uh, Grafana is online. And Jupyter Hub. Then here we can just sign in. Luckily, I didn't expose my password to the world. And again, so we're using OpenShift OAuth for a lot of. Um, these components by default. And here, these are, this is one of the customizations we've added to Jupyter Hub where you can uh, select your notebook from a list of notebooks. So we have kind of a minimal notebook, which is just kind of bare bones. Uh, I think it's just Python is installed. Uh, SciPy notebook for the SciPy library, a uh, uh, Spark notebook that has version 2. Uh, Spark 245 and Hadoop 273, um, a Spark SciPy notebook and a TensorFlow notebook. So any user that deploys this has access to this. So if they have, if they can kind of um, uh, read access to the namespace, a basic kind of minimal access to the namespace, they can deploy their own notebook. And uh, we have different sizes. So if you have a team that needs different size notebooks, there's an ability, these are the defaults that we provide, but you can provide your own custom resources. So even internally, uh, and externally, we have support. So if you wanted to change the small, medium, large configurations to be kind of uh, 10 CPU and you know 256 megabytes or gigabytes of memory, um, or even larger than that, where you have kind of small CPU but large memory, you can do that. And any if you the user wants to add any environment variables, they can. And then they just spawn the notebook. So this is under full control of the user at this point. They don't have access to the project space. Uh, where Jupyter Hub is running, um, but they have full access to their notebook pod. So if anybody has any questions about kind of the the process we went through to kind of debug this or any questions about any of the components, feel free to ask. I think Beverly has a, a couple more queued up here. Yeah. Um... So we've got a question. Since Open Data Hub 
is um, a platform or blueprint to, to building uh, an AI as a service platform. Can you talk into whether it works with GPUs? So yes, um, it does. So we have full support for GPUs. So um, the Open Data Hub does not do GPU enablement, but the notebook that we just spawned, um, a user has an option of requesting enable GPUs. Um, so I think, so let's do a, a quick shout out to opendatahub.io. We have a quick guide for how you can um, utilize GPUs in Open Data Hub. So we have links to um, upstream partners. So right now in AWS, you can add a GPU node and you can you would use the NVIDIA operator that's available in, I'm not sure if it's Red Hat operators or community operators. I but think you can, it's Red Hat operators, I'm pretty sure, but I will double check. Okay, so since it's in Red Hat operators, you will need a kind of fully subscribed cluster if I'm not mistaken. Um, but the access to the NVIDIA operator uh, is free, I'm using air quotes. So if your cluster has access to Red Hat operators, then you have access to the NVIDIA operator. So the NVIDIA operator um, is responsible for doing GPU enablement. So you provide the GPU node, uh, install the NVIDIA operator, and then that will handle kind of uh, using, it uh, requires, there's an auto dependency that's installed. The node feature discovery operator is a dependency for NVIDIA that will essentially catalog every node in the cluster, and it will give you all these annotate or these labels for different uh, hardware features that are available. And once it sees this annotation, the NVIDIA operator will um, go out to that node, install the appropriate drivers for the uh, GPU that's installed. Once that's installed, you should get um, this line here when you describe the node. So if you OC describe that GPU node and you see a this value, a non-zero value, that means that you have whatever this number is, uh, that many GPUs available for requests. So at this point, Open Data Hub can request X number of GPUs. Um, and then from there, you can spawn any notebook with um, that will request the GPUs, and then you can use that in your um, model development. Um, so you have full access to that GPU. I think right now, all of our examples use TensorFlow to, to uh, crunch the numbers, GPU. Hopefully that answered the question. Yeah, that was great, Langdon. Langdon, um, and can you talk about what the AI lab library is? <laughs> um, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> maybe Chad has an answer for that. I know he's done some work with the AI library. Um, if you pop over to the docs, there's a little overview on what AI library is there, and it's just... Okay. Ah, here we go. Uh, the AI library is an open source collection of AI components, machine learning algorithms, and solutions to common use cases to allow rapid prototyping. So again, um, if you have any questions about like any of the components, if you want to know more about them that we provide in Open Data, feel free to go to opendatahub.io. Um, we're always improving the docs um, and increasing the amount of documentation that's available for different components. So as we add a new component or update a new component to add features, it will be available on opendatahub.io website. Um, but I think these are, it's uh, a collection of models that you can use in your workflow. Um, and we're using Selden. So Selden is a dependency for the AI library um, where any of these models uh, will be deployed and the API um, will be available for you to uh, submit data to. Okay. Then back to the GPU topic, um, we just got a question coming in from Oleg um, on YouTube. How to automatically run CALs on free GPU? Is there any spawner for that? GPUs with some RAM available? Not sure. The so how how ahead, how 
how is it generally working in OpenShift with GPUs? Um, it's basically that the container, when you're spawning a container, um, and it requests some resources that can, can be CPU, memory, or any special resources like GPUs. Um, the container will run on that node, and based on the configuration, it will it will get those resources. So for memory, you ask for 100 gigabytes of RAM. If you have a node which can accommodate that container, it will get that. If it's GPU, if there is a node that has a free GPU, unassigned GPU, it will get that GPU. Right now, there is no good solution, as far as I know, uh, for like splitting GPUs or something. So if you are talking about using a GPU, it will be one GPU per container or multiple GPUs per container, but cannot be multiple containers per GPU. There are hacks around it, but it doesn't really, really, really work uh, yet. Um, so for this, um, we cannot automatically run. So if you just say in your code running in a container, hey, if it's there, if, if there is a GPU, I'd like to run this on GPU, that's not how it works. The container the pod itself has to specify that it requires a GPU to run. And if there is a free GPU, it will be assigned to that node and it will be, it will be run on that node and it will get the GPU kind of mounted into the devices of that container and the code inside the container can use that. Problem with that, as long as that container runs, the GPU is allocated and cannot be allocated to something else. Um, so there is no smart way right now to, let's say, Okay, if there is a free GPU, run on GPU. If not, do not run on GPU. We don't have that, and I, I don't think anyone really has. Um, potentially, you could write an operator which would um, take your code and inject some information whether there is a free GPU or not, and then based on that, the code would change uh, the execution path, and then uh, maybe based on the information from the cluster, it would either get or don't get GPUs, but, but I haven't seen such solution yet. Um, but in general, there is no automated way how to how to decide this um, available in OpenAdap or in OpenShift in general. Cool. Thanks for that. And um, I'm looking at the time, and we're almost to the end of the hour. So maybe, um, Landon, if you want to share that slide where people can find additional resources again while we blather on a little bit more, um, that would be a, a great way to, to end the hour here. And um, I'm, I'm just wondering, because um, you have lots of different partners and different integrations into this, have you done anything, uh, it, just because they are um, now part of our family, with the IBM Watson stuff? Have you, has anyone integrated any of that into um, and use it from a Jupyter Notebook? Um, or is that something for a um, future, future briefing? We actually have an issue uh, created where IBM provides a CUDA-enabled Im container image um, where we basically cannot redistribute them uh, as Open Data Hub and as Red Hat. We cannot redistribute CUDA binaries in our images. We always have to build it on spot. So if, if you deploy um, Open Data Hub and you want to use GPUs and you want to have CUDA-enabled images, you have to build them in your cluster, which it's fine, we provide all those build configs and everything, it just takes time and some resources for the build. Whereas IBM provides these images in actually Red Hat registry. Um, so we have an issue for looking at whether we can use that image as a base for some of our Jupyter Notebook images so that we don't have to rebuild build them, but we can actually leverage what they already provide. Um, on the other front, um, IBM is very active in Kubeflow community, so we are talking to them often in our community calls and in Kubeflow community calls and uh, coordinating basically um, the Kubeflow operator, which is a base for Open Data Hub operator now, uh, has been built by IBM team with our guidance um, and, and contributions to uh, ideas, documentation, um, and some code. Uh, but they, they did majority of the work, um, the, the open source team at, at IBM. So um, really, really good collaboration there. Awesome. Well, we're going to have to get them on again soon and um, see if we can't uh, make that all work and explain how that all works too. So um, I really want to thank Beverly for, for stepping up and organizing this today and making it happen and the whole team from Open Data Hub for coming and answering questions and sharing um, your your wonderful project and um, congratulate you on, on it's really 
come a long way since the last time um, I did an open upstream conversation on it. So it's really amazing to see all this. And um, I know I've been talking with folks like Guillaume Mautier um, around um, some of the work that he's doing up. I'm up in Canada as is Guillaume and um, with the COVID project in the and that the uh, Ontario folks are doing and, and hopefully we can get him back on again talking about that some more. I think we did a briefing a little while ago, but I think a lot of people out there in lots of different spaces are leveraging what your what started out as simply a reference architecture and has turned into a real community around things. So kudos to y'all for, for making this happen and thank you Landon for making the demo work and um, explaining the fix. And we will have you guys back again soon for um, uh, new updates and new um, use cases for this. So again, here's all the information you need to, to find everybody. And um, hopefully we'll get your feedback and have a few of you on showing us what you're doing with ODH soon. So thanks again, everybody. Thank you. Bye. And we will upload this and put the slides, um, link it to on the YouTube channel, RH OpenShift, and I'm sure the Open Data Hub folks will steal that video and put it out on their feeds as well. So um, look for that shortly. Thank you all for taking the time today. Take care and be safe.